The devil is in the details when it comes to supersizing and growing your business. Sharon Horn Austin here. I don't really have anything devilish or devilly around me. Uh, don't think I've ever even dressed up as a devil for Halloween. But today, our idiom, our expression for supersize your business is the devil is in the details when supersizing and growing our businesses. Now, this is another idiom that they're not sure about the origin. They, they saw it popping up in the 1800s in Germany and then in the 1900s in the United States. And it's often attributed to a German-American architect by the name of Ludwig Mies von der Rohe. I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's German. I used to speak German, but not these days. But there's there's skepticism over whether it actually came from that or not because there's an earlier version of this particular idiom or expression, which is God is in the details, right? So you can look at the, just like everything else, the positive or the negative side of anything, and idioms are no exception. Uh, most of the idioms that I've talked about, you can find a positive spin to them or a negative spin to them. It seems like the negative ones become more popular. And I think that that's prevalent in our society because human beings tend to focus on and pay attention to the negative. And I don't know if we do that naturally to keep us safe or if it's because we've been inundated with it at least my entire life via the news media and reporting and things like that. Uh, often think that it would be cool to have an all positive news station, but the truth is people wouldn't watch it. And I believe it's probably been tried before. So what does this idiom and expression mean? That the devil is in the details or God is in the details, whichever way you want to look at it. It means that details, the little things may actually be very, very important. Sometimes <clears throat> things that seem insignificant or unimportant at the time turn out to be critical. Things like not signing contracts with a partner, not having things in writing, not having expectations shared and agreed upon up front, not communicating or communicating with people or people communicating with you in a way that is less than 100% above board or honest. Think of resumes. Have you ever hired anyone for your business? <laughs> if you've read any number of resumes before, you know that it's kind of like the way they describe real estate. It's There's a lot of puffing and there's a lot of puffery it's called it's actually the technical term i believe is puffery and it means that you're embellishing the truth you're, or you're only presenting positives of something you know i, I my ex-husband and i used to do real estate and we would um, deal with distressed properties and the way some of them were described and then you'd go in and see them it was mind-boggling uh, so what does this have to do with growing and building and supersizing our business it reminds us to pay attention to the things that could come back to bite us in the rear if we don't pay attention to them up front. And I have, unfortunately, lots of examples of that throughout my past, through my career, and through the different businesses that I've owned and operated and worked with. Sometimes we are, are doing a project or we're doing something and we don't think it's important or we overlook something that seems like a minor thing and isn't going to matter, and it causes the entire project to come to a screeching halt. I think of uh, in corporate America, every few years back when technology was first getting rolling, because I am that old, uh, we would have systems change, computer systems changes. And it wasn't just a quick update on your phone or your laptop, because there was no such thing. It was a huge endeavor that involved every area and aspect of the organization, especially as we started connecting systems and departments and information and things. And you know, some of them would take two years to install a new update or a new computer system, depending on what I was in manufacturing, but depending on what the business and what the system was. And usually, I hate to admit it, but it took that long mm -hmm. because there was some detail in the planning process that was overlooked, a department or a function or a, a feature of the, the new software that just didn't get considered how it was going to actually implement impact the whole organization. So it's important to pay attention to the details. It's important to write things down, have things agreed upon, make sure that when we're communicating things like expectations, contracts and things that we really understand that both parties understand. I think of negotiations all the time. Everybody's coming at it from a different perspective. And sometimes we forget that we, our reality isn't everyone else's reality and that we have different perspectives. Um, so curious, have you used this expression? I don't think I've, I've ever used this expression. Maybe once or twice in my life, but I don't usually, I don't recall saying the devil's in the details. But as a not naturally detail-oriented person, uh, I find it necessary that I do 
use tools and things that help me to remember the details. I use project management software now that it exists. Before then, I used to create my own Excel spreadsheets. Before they existed, I used notebook and paper to make sure I didn't miss things. But we have to find tools and things that work for us to build on our strengths and help us out in areas that we're not so strong. I know that I'm not a detail-oriented person, so I have to create checklists and project plans and action items that can be checked off as I complete them so I don't miss details and I don't make mistakes. Because guess what? Some of those are the most painful experiences we have if we forget to dot our I's and cross our T's, especially when it comes to government things, legal things, insurance, uh, contracts and things like that. We want to have maybe somebody that's more detail oriented than us overseeing it and reviewing what we do in those areas if we want to grow and build and supersize our business. All right. Have an awesome day. If I can help in any way, ask. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it to build and grow and supersize your business right now? Have an awesome day.